Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist. This video is an overview of the main feature of my texture baking add-on, which allows you to take a high poly collection of objects, bake all of the details from it onto a low poly collection of objects, resulting in a baked collection of objects that should have the visual fidelity of the high poly collection, more or less, but with approximately the performance overhead of the low poly collection. The way that works is you have a high poly collection of objects, which um, can contain as many objects as you want, with as much geometry as you want, however many materials you want. You can put all kinds of modifiers on there. You can use geometry nodes. It just has to be in the collection and arranged in an organized way. And then it also needs a low poly collection of objects, which should, if you move them over, line up with the high poly collection, but can be placed anywhere in the scene. Um, snapping the objects to the grid helps with keeping everything organized easily. Then you simply select any object in either of the collections and you click Bake Collection. And the result of that will be this baked object in the Bake Collection with the geometry of the low poly collection, but with more or less the visual fidelity of the high poly collection. I figure the best way to demonstrate this is just to show how it works. So I'm going to delete all of this. I'm going to delete the empties. I'm going to delete the baked object. And we're going to quickly work on this new object that I've added, which is a simple box. So you can see that there's the low poly and the high poly. They have slightly different geometry. The high poly is made up of two objects with two different materials. There's the wooden part and the metal part. The low poly is just a single mesh and it doesn't have any of the any geometry for the metal part. Before we bake this, I want to add some modifiers and effects to improve the visual fidelity of this object. The first thing I want to do is I have a shader here that has a random attribute in it for assigning a different shade to each of the boards in the mesh and to make use of that I need to assign a random attribute to the mesh and I can do that using my random island value modifier which just will find each mesh island and assign it a random color of gray. I'd also like to apply some damage to the corners of the box um, which will just sort of highlight the edges and stuff and I can do that with a modifier I made called edge attribute and all that that modifier does is it takes the edge angle attribute from geometry nodes and assigns it to a named attribute that I can use in the shader. However, that attribute is interpolated across the faces, so to make it actually use the edges, I have to modify the geometry of the high poly mesh a little bit. So to do that, I'll select all of these in faces and give it a little bit of an inset so that that edge attribute only interpolates from here to here instead of across the entirety of the face. Then with the rest of these being simple quads, I'll select the remaining three sides and then I'll select the ends of the end pieces, and then I will do an individual inset on all of those. That will limit the edge wear effect to only be applied to the corners of the box. That also had the effect of improving the normal slightly, but I'd like to work on that even more, and I can do that by adding a bevel modifier. We'll turn that down a little bit, and then we will increase the number of segments. It's important to add the bevel modifier after the edge attribute modifier. For these metal pieces, I'm going to use the same process. It's built with a solidify modifier, so I can simply select all of it and do an individual inset. And then I'll add the edge attribute modifier to add edge wear to the metal pieces. With that done, we've added quite a bit of detail to the box, which is only supposed to be seen from about so far away. So um, it doesn't need to be any higher resolution than that. What I would now like to do is transfer that detail that I added to the high poly model to this low poly model. And all we have to do to do that is select all of these objects, make sure that they're in a collection called props high poly. And then I need to make sure that all of these objects are moved into a collection called props low poly. I can then open the end panel and go to the DJH tab where the batch baker panel is located. And with any of the objects selected, I can click Bake Collection. It'll tell me that there were no origin empties in the collections and that they've been created. Those will be placed at the center of the scene. And if you move them over here, they can be placed anywhere. This one is the high poly, so it should go over here. And this is the low poly. You can then just snap them to the grid. And all they need to do is whatever the offset, however you would move the high poly one so that it was at the location of the low poly one, needs to be the same translation that's applied between all of your high poly and low poly objects. So in this case, that's moved two meters on the y-axis. Then one final thing you should check is that all of your objects in your low poly collection have UV maps. Um, they don't have to be unwrapped in any particular way. They just need to have a valid unwrap.
Otherwise, your bake result will be all garbled. And then finally, all you need to do is select any object in either of the collections. And with that selected, you can edit the settings for your bake. So you can choose the directory where it will be saved. Currently, it's set to a folder called textures relative to where the blend file is saved. Um, you can choose your, the resolution. Let's turn it down just so that it bakes faster. You can choose the margin and pixels that the bake expands beyond your UV islands. And you can choose the extrusion amount that is used when baking to make the high poly larger so that it encompasses all of the high poly. By default, when you bake, it will pack all your UVs. Instead, if you want to manually pack all of the UV islands for your low poly, which I currently have all overlapping here, um, you can manually pack them and then uncheck that, which will keep your UVs consistent across multiple bakes, which is useful, especially if you want to bake like color variations for the same set of assets, um, but have them use the same UVs. Otherwise, the UVs that are generated could be different with each successive bake. But if you don't really care about your UV layout, um, packing it will do it automatically and is really quick. Once you're happy with all of your settings, all you have to do is click Bake Collection. It will show a progress number on the cursor as it's working, or if you have the console open, you can actually see what it's doing. So currently it's baking the roughness, now it's baking the normal map. And then when it is complete, it will create a clone of the entire low poly collection, put a new material on it with the textures it just baked as the sources, which looks like this. If you go to that textures folder, all of the outputs will be saved there. They will all be named based on the name of the collection plus a suffix for the type of map that it is. So this is the metallic or the roughness. And yeah, that's about it. There are some additional features such as being able to bake just an individual map with any sort of custom output you want on it. Um, I may cover that in another video, but for the main feature, what I think is the coolest about this add-on is the collection baking. And I just wanted to cover that in this one. Um, if you have a different sort of workflow where you're using multiple texture tiles or like UDIMs, or if you have custom map types, like some sort of a custom subsurface scattering map, it may be possible to do it with this add-on or to, for this add-on to help that process in some way, but that's not really what I designed it for. This is designed to make your most basic PBR shader where you just have a base color, a roughness, optionally a metallic, um, a normal map and an optionally an ambient occlusion It'll do all of that really, really well and make it super fast and streamlined um, to be able to make lots of things quickly. My goal with this add-on was to make the process of baking an asset much more like pressing render when you're working on a scene. Um, so it should feel more like you model an asset as a creative process. You're experimenting with things and then you click bake and the result of clicking bake is you get a finished asset that you can use that's performant and fast and has all the textures packed and everything as opposed to the vanilla Blender workflow where you have to create extra materials and select specific things in the right order. And because my experience has been switching to that mindset of doing all of these technical tasks to bake the textures so that I have an asset that I can use is it just really kills my creativity for creating anything after that point. So, so I didn't show modeling this little box, but it literally took me two minutes. And then you saw in the video how quickly I was able to make that a high poly and look nice and then transfer it onto the low poly. And now we have this finished box that just needs to be split. Um, and obviously I baked this at a very low resolution, which made it fast, but um, it would look nicer if I baked it at a higher one as well. Anyway, I just wanted to demonstrate that feature because I think it's really cool. My DJH Bake Batcher add-on is available right now on Blender Market. So if it's something that would be useful in your workflow, um, feel free to go over and pick one up. There is more detailed documentation about it um, that should outline everything about how to use it on my website in a written format. And I'm currently in the middle of making a series of videos on my process for modeling and baking and everything for game assets, which will cover baking very soon. So if you want to see more the process of from beginning to end of modeling an asset and how I do that and use the, this add-on as part of that process, then that is probably on the channel by now as well. Anyway, I hope it will be a useful tool for you. Um, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.